My name is Eureka. I am a senior biology student at Simmons on the pre-vet track. So my research is on cholangiohepatitis in dogs, and it is a case study on my dog, Bailey. This was done at Newton Animal Hospital with the help of the veterinarians there, Dr. Santos and Dr. Gastrock, and my faculty member was Dr. Charlotte Ross. So I'll start with the introduction. So what is cholangiohepatitis? As the name implies, it's inflammation of the liver in biliary ducts. So um, before we get too deep into cholangiohepatitis though, I'd like to discuss the digestive system. So as food moves down the GI tract, the liver makes bile acid, a strong emulsifier that helps to break down fat, kill parasites, and can also bind toxins to eliminate it before they're absorbed. Bile normally is stored in the biliary duct and gallbladder, but when there's inflammation, along the liver and biliary duct. This blocks the proper flow of the bile and forces it to stay in the liver and biliary duct. Since bile is a strong digestive fluid, when it stays somewhere other than the gallbladder, it can cause serious damage to the surrounding organs. There are two presentations of cholangiohepatitis. One is called superative and acute onset and um, is associated with neutrophils, which are white blood cells or cells that fight off infection. Although the cause of cholangiohepatitis isn't well known, it is believed that this form is set off by a bacterial infection since there's so many neutrophils found. Um, so it's believed that a bacterial infection calls on neutrophils to fight it off. The neutrophils cause inflammation of the biliary tract and can cause bile to be unable to flow properly. There's another type called non-superative, and this includes a different type of white blood cells, lymphocytes and plasma cells. This form is believed to be chronic, um, and again, it's, the cause is not well known, it's just that it could be a bacterial infection as well, like superative cholangiohepatitis, but they found that some cats without an active infection show signs of cholangiohepatitis, and there's, they won't respond to antibiotics, um, so they have tried immunosuppressive therapy and they respond to that. So it's believed to be a chronic form and to be immune mediated. And most patients with cholangiohepatitis present with anorexia, lethargy, and vomiting. Superative cholangiohepatitis are often characterized with abdominal pain and high fever. Quick action really needs to take place to correctly diagnose and treat this condition because if left untreated, it can be fatal and can cause permanent damage to the liver, like cirrhosis, and cause dysfunction of other organs, where prognosis would then be very guarded. However, that being said, it's difficult to differentiate between the two forms of non-superative um, and superative cholangiohepatitis, and since non-superative cholangiohepatitis won't respond to antibiotics, um, if it's diagnosed incorrectly, it's a lot of valuable time to help a patient that is being wasted. Um, common diagnosis includes blood work, abdominal ultrasounds, and x-rays to rule out any obstruction, and also to see if there's any um, cancer or masses that can be causing the inflammation. Other diagnostics include liver biopsies and bile cultures, but these are often avoided in unstable patients given the risk with anesthetic um, procedures. Most times though treatment will include medication and also surgical removal of the gallbladder but again surgeries um, always carry its own set of risks risk, and thus are not recommended for patients that are not stable yet. And one thing also that many um, owners will elect to not do surgeries is because pet insurance companies don't work like human insurance companies and many owners will pay out of pocket for procedures, and these procedures could easily be over $5,000 with the hospitalization, medication, surgeries, and round-the-clock care. So it's a really hard decision for a lot of owners to make. Now we'll discuss the case study. So a 10-year-old spayed female dog presents with lethargy, inappetence, and vomiting for the past three days. Upon physical exam, she has a normal temperature. Dogs run a little higher than people, so this is a totally normal temperature. She's quiet but alert and reactive, and she has a tacky mucous membrane, which shows that she may be dehydrated. 
On abdominal palpation, she reveals that she's painful and the whites of her eyes and her ears have a yellow hue, which is called icterus. So blood work is run and she has elevated liver enzymes, the GGT, ALT, ALP, are liver enzymes, so that hints at hepatitis. As you can see, her ALP, which is um, at 2,000 units per liter, should be around 23 to 212, so that is significantly higher than it should be. Um, and as you can see, there's no reading on the ALT. We dilute her blood twice to get a reading. Um, her levels were just so high that our machines couldn't read them at first. And um, we finally got a reading on the ALP on the second dilution, but her ALT still won't read. And then we notice that she has elevations in her bilirubin or to do with the biliary tract. So that shows that she probably has cholangitis, which helps us um, get closer to our diagnosis. We also take um, an abdominal x-ray to rule out any obstruction or cancer. On imaging, as you can see, her um, liver looks fine and she seems to not have any masses, so we can rule out cancer for now. So over the next few days, we treat her as an outpatient given how fearful she is of medical procedures and her age and instability and financial reasons. Surgery was avoided for me. She is put on fluids that are given IV or subcutaneously or under the skin. And she's sent home with Serenia, which is a strong anti-nausea medication. She's put on lactulose, a medication that is often used for constipation and to also used to prevent complications from liver disease. It pulls water from the body to the colon to help bind bile and pull them out. So it'll be helpful for her who has um, probably a lot of bile um, in her system. And she's put on metronidazole, an antibiotic to treat for any suspected bacterial infection. Ursodiol, a cytoprotective, which means um, this medication will also help to keep the bile flowing. And from the first day of treatment, she seems to be slowly improving. Um, she's more bright and alert, and she's not as lethargic, and she starts to eat, which is an improvement on her quality of life. She's also switched from a low-fat diet to help the bile acids not be as active as they already are, since bile acids, again, um, work to digest fats. So a low-fat diet would help with that. And in this picture, I don't know if you can see, but you can. there's some yellowing around where um, the fur is circled. This is just um, showing that the treatment is working. Um, so much of her bile acids are leaving her body They'll leave through her fecal, they'll leave through her fur. Um, so this is all good news that she is on her um, way to recovery. Over the next few months, this is um, us tracking her enzymes, her ALP and ALT. Her blood work is all monitored. And you can see that her liver enzymes are just going down significantly and they are getting closer to being um, within normal. And ultrasounds were done a couple months after presentation um, to show that the liver is back to normal. There are no um, findings of cirrhosis or permanent damage, thankfully. And the gallbladder is distended. That was one thing that was noted. But she has a normal bilirubin and not showing any symptoms of cholangiohepatitis. So this was left untreated. Bailey was a case where we did not have to undergo surgery and um, invasive diagnostics and an example of a specific tra treatment plan that might work for other patients as well, given the financial constraints many pet owners face when their pet is sick and as well as for patients that aren't stable enough to undergo surgery. I think this is a great um, treatment plan given how well it worked for Bailey. Um, however, I do think that preventative measures are so important by having routine blood screens and um, they can lead to prompt diagnosis and aggressive treatment quickly, um, but definitely more research and documentation should are necessary to allow patients for more definitive diagnosis and options for care for owners um, instead of one plan that we follow of a biopsy. So I would love to end this presentation to thank um, the doctors at Newton Animal Hospital and um, the Dr. Russell from Simmons 
and thank you so much for listening to this.